You're listening to a Pave Media show. Visit pavemedia.net for more podcasts and video entertainment. So, John, I've got a question for you this week. Can you guess what it is? Hit me. Truth or dare? Well, given that I don't think a dare would read, I've very got one well prepared on a podcast. You've got a dare prepared. Mm-hmm. You don't need you. You can you can whatever. I'm going to choose truth. I feel like I'm. I feel like I'm an open book. Okay, that's that's a good choice. <laughs> Your dare would not have been good. Okay. So truth. Would you rather some dark secret came out about Cher, which makes her undeniably a bad person, so much so that you can't enjoy any of her films or music anymore? The other choice. Or Eurovision is from now on forevermore commentated on live in a stadium over the act's performances by Donald Trump. Wow, that's mean. Mm. I'm going to say... I'll choose the Eurovision option because I very seldom watch Eurovision broadcast. Oh, no, no. This is included in, like, if you were to go to Eurovision, Donald Trump is there. He's talking live on the stadium PA while the people are performing. He's commentating on what they're doing. Okay. You know what? Eventually he'll die. <laughs> and, you know, Cher's music lives forever. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to go with Cher. I'm going to go with Cher. You're going to keep Cher? I'm going to keep Cher's keep Cher legacy... Is. Pure. Sacrifice your vision. I will sacrifice your vision for sure. All right. Yeah. Okay. What was my dare going to be? I'm glad I didn't pick dare. To be honest, it would have been difficult. I was going to dare you to speak in a different accent for the the whole podcast. Oh no, that would have been terrible. You could have changed your accent halfway through, but just as long as it's not your own. No, that would have been so... a disaster. I'm glad I chose truth. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome everybody to Beyond the Box Set, a podcast where we pitch prequels, sequels and spin-offs to films that don't have any. I'm Harry, joining me as always is John. Hello. And this is week number three in our season of films based off games. It is, yeah. So obviously this is Truth or Dare, that beautiful game that everybody has played at some point in their life. Of course. And everybody has regretted at some point in their life. Sure. This film was everything I wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. This was just so stupid. (laughs) (laughs) And so predictable and just great. I really enjoyed this film. This film, film was perfect. Because yeah. <laughs> this was te- this was technically my pick. I think it was, I feel like it was more your pick because it was my suggestion. But your, your suggestion, your I decision. Agreed, yeah, yeah. I don't regret it. I had a great time with this movie. <laughs> like this is a terrible film. Oh don't, god! Let's not. Yeah, let's let's yeah. not make any bones of that. This film no. is awful, <laughs> mm-hmm. and it could have been so much better in so many ways. Which would have made it so much worse. In some ways, yes. I think there are because ways it, it could because have been. if this film was like if it, if it was getting towards the area of being a good film, then mm. it would have not been a bad film anymore. No, true, but it could have been like a scream kind of thing. I think it could have been a better film and also a more entertaining film. Mm-hmm. That being said, for what it was. Thoroughly enjoyed it. I have no <laughs> complaints about this movie. Yeah, I absolutely got what I wanted out of this. It was short. Mm-hmm. That's refreshing. It's so refreshing. I, I don't know what's been wrong with us for the past few weeks or something, yeah. but I mean, going hand in hand with all the Oscar nominations, mm. everything is the worst duration a film can be, which is anywhere between two hours and two hours 45. Yeah. That is the worst duration for any film to be. Anything between those, which is the majority of films these days yeah including things like Avengers Infinity War no just be longer or be shorter really you'd rather it be long you'd rather it be like three and a half hours than two hours commit to being long okay Lord of the Rings commit to being long well that's true that's an experience yeah Yeah. Okay. if you go for some three hours do it make it it three hours fine just commit go 100% I don't feel like between two and two hours 45 is a commitment that's like you know what we want to make a film either we don't know how to edit this down or like we really want to like make a really good film. We've got a lot of content to squeeze into this and we just can't cut anything. Yeah. Yeah. Two and a half hours means it's a film that nobody's edited properly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I agree. This film was a tight, maybe a hundred minutes, maybe something like it that. Was, yeah. It was, it wasn't much over an hour and a half. Mm. It had a very simple premise that it mm-hmm. stuck to. And it stuck to, and unlike films like Bird Box, for example, mm-hmm. so Bird Box is a film where 
you're given a concept and then you as the viewer are constantly questioning it. Yeah. And it almost never answers those questions. Mm Mm-hmm. Whereas this one, it gives you what I think is genuinely a good concept. Yeah, sure. It's not the most original, but yes, it absolutely it it's gives not, you yeah, a concept. Yeah, it's not, it's not majorly original, but it's it's like, here's a solid concept, yeah. and we're going to go with this. Yeah. And then you have questions about it. For example, well, why don't they just pick truth all the time? Because that's easier. And, and then they, they, them, they, yeah. they deal with that. Sure, yeah. And they work it out. This film gets it right. I mean, I think there are plot holes. Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> they could have told some people. <laughs> well, Spec- the, the, the characters' decisions... Are, um, are not g- smart, now. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to commend them. <laughs> no, yeah. But as a, as a broad concept, I agree. Mm. It's thoroughly entertaining. Mm-hmm. What the hell? Look, I know. It sounds insane, but the game is real. Once you're asked, you're in. Okay, wherever you go, whatever you do. It'll find you. Okay, don't, don't tell the truth or you die. Do the dare or you die. Refuse to play. Just, just, just follow the rules. Okay, so where do you want to start with this? Oh, I mean, where do you start with this? I liked how the characters in this film were just awful and that was fine. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> They were all different levels and different kinds of bad. Yeah. And they lent into it. Yeah, this is a classic film where you've got a concept and you've got a bunch of teenagers, mm-hmm. question mark? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... That the, was one thing. <laughs> the ages in this film were all over the place, mm-hmm. <laughs> which I also very much enjoyed. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure we'll get into. Yeah, but you didn't care about whether anyone lived or died because they were all either actively horrible or yep. they had like a single personality trait so it did uh, not matter well there was one person I cared who died really? cared that he died Ronnie? I don't know their names okay um, the essentially the first guy the guy who fell off the pool table yeah Ronnie Ronnie yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> this guy oh Ronnie oh Ronnie <laughs> <laughs> he was something else I feel like he was the worst actor in the movie but I conversely really enjoyed him yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> He was the worst character. Oh, sure, yeah. By a million miles. Yeah. Like, they're all bad people. Mm-hmm. He's the worst person. Yeah, well, in, do you mean morally or just in terms of being a bad leader? I, I think morally. I don't know. I feel like the, the other guy was... All, the guy who stabbed himself in the eye was pretty bad as well. I don't remember much of what he was Penelope's about. boyfriend. Yeah, I, no, I remember bits of him. Should we just dive straight into a plot summary? Yeah, I feel it. like we need to just get into yeah, yeah, yeah. it. Okay, so, this film... <laughs> <laughs> so it stars nobody <laughs> nobody in this film is famous wait I think there was one person okay you, you you keep talking okay well the main two actresses Olivia we have Olivia and Marky basically Olivia is brunette and Marky is a blonde what's her name Marky the blonde one was called Marky that's yeah. not a name no no not, yeah but they are like best friends mm-hmm Olivia is played by Lucy Hale, who I do recognise. She's in that TV show, Pretty Little Lies, which I've not watched, but I know of. So Okay. I'm pretty sure she's like the banner name in this. And I'll say this for this film, considering it's a really like bottom of the barrel horror movie. I did like how it was based around a female friendship rather than like a romance. Yeah. Like that was generally, I mean, that being said, they have a toxic, <laughs> toxic, un- very unhealthy friendship. Don't they? But at least it's kind of, you know that friendship is the story yeah normally like the blonde best friend is like the third person who dies whereas spoiler alert in this film marky makes it to the end yeah i wasn't really she outlives the that. boyfriends yeah, uh, yeah I, I really thought it was just going to be the main character was the only person left and that the best friend was going to die a yeah. bit earlier on but then the film does kind of let you know okay there's more of a relationship yeah. going on here with these two. yeah i thought it was going to be her and the you know marky's going to die conveniently and it's going to be her and the boyfriend marky's boyfriend who she's secretly in love with yeah i thought they were going to be like the final two yeah but so Talk, you know, fair enough, that fair play to them for not going down that obvious route. Mm-hmm. So, on the one hand, they seem to be very, very committed to each other. They mm-hmm. seem to be like, you know, they're best, best friends. On the other hand, they do seem to be constantly doing shitty things to each other. So bad. Yeah. So, at the beginning of the film, Olivia, who's our main character, the brunette, played by Lucy Hale. Yeah. She is planning to go... Well, the, the rest of the gang, including Marky, they're going on a... They're all in college. College? Question mark? Yeah, yeah, it's college. No, they are in, co- yeah, they are in yeah, college. Yeah, 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 I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm still questioning the ages, but they are in college. they're about to have their last spring, spring break. Spring break, yeah. So they're heading the, the last spring break before they graduate. 
And Marquis is like, Olivia, are you going to come with us for this last spring break? And Olivia's like, no, I'm going to do some volunteer work this week, so mm-hmm. I've got no, I don't have time. And Marquis is like, well, you know what? I want you to come so badly that I've cancelled your volunteer work on your behalf and told them you've got shingles. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Which at no point is she annoyed about. No, she's like, oh, oh, you. It's just like, oh, okay. I guess we're doing this then. Yeah, yeah. She goes along with that very quickly. But also, it's like, it's it's weird. She's like, you're my best friend. You know, you're you're my closest, dearest friend. I I love you more than anyone in my immediate family. But you know, after this summer, life's gonna tear us apart forever. Yeah. And we'll never be friends again. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was weird. It was like you have a very bleak view of this friendship. Like, but accurate. Bleak but accurate. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so I've been doing some thinking and. I forgive you. For what? For saying you can't come on spring break. I know you didn't mean it. Marky? Yeah. I love you so much. You know that. But I can't. I already signed up for Habitat. I know. Yeah, I'm a trip leader. No, I know, yeah. I know. It's just... Since high school, you and I haven't spent more than a week away from each other. This is our last chance to have some fun before life tears us apart. I mean, when you put it that way... <laughs> so after Marky has basically sabotaged Olivia's, you know, summer plans of doing volunteer work for mm-hmm. Habitat for Humanity, whatever she's planning to do, Olivia agrees to go to Mexico with her and the rest of the gang. And they all go to Mexico and have a Snapchat montage adventure. There was so much of this film that was pure 2018. Wasn't it? And, and, it, and I mean, it, it was, I feel like the film is trying to be instantly dated. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like this is a film written by probably like forty-year-olds who yeah. were like, "What did kids? What are yeah. kids into these days?" <laughs> Snapchat. Let's make that a major feature of this film. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. And YouTube. They've all got YouTube channels, don't they? Well, Olivia has a YouTube channel. Yes. Mm. I don't know the rest of them particularly do, but our main character has a YouTube channel, which comes into play later in the film as well. Of yeah, course. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, the the whole gang they go off to Mexico for this spring break. Mm-hmm. So you have Olivia and Marky, who are Olivia's the brunette, Marky's the blonde. Mm. Uh, and then they have a bunch of friends who all have exactly one personality trait each. I do love how Olivia and Marky, like, the f- their first scene is just like, oh, we're such best friends. We're just mm. the best friends in the world. I love you so much. You're just oh, the best the expos- in the world. Oh, the exposition in this film was out of control. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ever since my father died, you've been the most important person in my life. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, that's going to come back. That Yeah, that that's the kind of thing you say casually every day when you see mm. your best friend. Just like, oh, hi, since my father died, you've been the most important person in my life. <laughs> Like, I've not put it in my drinking games, but drink for anything that you successfully guess in advance. Oh, sure. Oh, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. Let's not get, <laughs> let's not get ahead of ourselves here. So. <laughs> so, yeah, they go to Mexico with their, like, their group of one personality trait friends mm-hmm. who are, so we have, <laughs> we have Marky has a boyfriend called Lucas. Yep. Wait, is that the guy with the squint drill? Yes. Yeah. This is the thing. All of the male cast members in this film look identical. I know. It's hard to follow. It's really annoying. They're all just generically brunette and vaguely stubbly. And, yeah. yeah. So Lucas, his personality trait is supportive boyfriend. Yeah. That's all he's got. He's bringing nothing else to the table. We have Brad, uh, whose personality type is gay. Yes. Uh, you can tell he's gay because everyone keeps mentioning it. That's like his only person. <laughs> <laughs> And also because he's always wearing very short cut-off shorts. Like, mm-hmm. right up, very, very short shorts. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep, yep. And that's his personality. Yes, and that's also his plot. That's also his plot, yeah. It's a weird knockoff of Love, Simon, isn't it? it well, it is, except that it's... <laughs> <laughs> it's so bizarre. It's so very bizarre. Also, he is... I, I really wanted him to say... Because what's the line in Love, Simon? Just like you stole my coming out or something like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I really wanted him to say that, like, to have a, have a word to word with the devil and just be like, you stole my coming out. Oh, we'll get to his coming out <laughs> because that was, that was a moment in this film. Anyway, other characters. We have Penelope, mm. who is just this huge lush who's never seen without a bottle of vodka in her hand. She has a boyfriend called Tyson, <clears throat> who is a trainee doctor. Tyson. Tyson, terrible, terrible. These names name. are just awful. They are just like first draft names. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Tyson's personality trait is a horrible human being. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, then there is... Actually, wait, I don't remember Tyson. What, what all happened with him? Tyson is the one who just seems to be always going from zero to villain really quickly. Like, so when they go and play Truth or Dare, it gets to Tyson's turn to play, and he say, he's like, Olivia, Truth or Dare? And she's like, Truth. And then Tyson goes, so admit it, are you in love with Marky's boyfriend? Uh, it's like, he just yeah. loves to stir the shit. Yeah, yeah. Tyson likes to mix it up. Like, yeah. So that that's his personality trait. He doesn't last. I long. mean, t- to be fair, he's he's the guy who's just encouraging everybody to 
just sort of be open with each other. Which, sure. which, which is the key to a solid friendship, let's be honest. I mean, in his case... A solid long-term friendship. Not saying he's the good guy. Are you, are you saying he's say- the Rachel Vice of this movie? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'll tell you, know you what, like a badger. You know what? Yes, I am. <laughs> well, he does worse things, but we'll get to those when the plot arrives at them. What's but his I, name again? Tyson. Tyson for Best Supporting Actress. Actress? Yeah. Well, okay, sure. <laughs> Put him up against Rachel Vice. see what happens. Great, well, <laughs> good luck with that. I think that's so that's the main crew. So we've got Marky and Olivia, Lucas, Tyson, Brad and Penelope. Mm-hmm. They go to Mexico. They have this little Snapchat montage. Yeah. Of just, just being Americans drinking around Mexico. They're at some nightclub and they're, they're all getting really drunk. Uh, Olivia is at the bar and she runs into Ronnie. Mm-hmm. Maybe my personal favorite character. So Ronnie makes a terrible, terrible pass at Olivia. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, how about menage so, a trois? So he wasn't even on their group. No, what was he doing there? He he just happened to be in spring break at the same place as and, them. Yeah, he also went to Mexico. Yeah. At no point does he have any friends. No. Was he just hanging out in Mexico on his own? <laughs> That's a good point, yeah. Um, <laughs> well, no, I, I could see that he abandoned his friends because he thought he was going to get laid. Sure. In like, the, he saw a woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. I, I, I could see that being the case. But yes, his chat-up lines were <laughs> something else. <laughs> oh, Olivia, what? Ronnie, hi, what are you doing here? Oh, I'm just skiing. What do you think I'm doing here? I'm getting my spring break on. Do you want to join me? <laughs> no, thanks. Hey, where's Marky? Maybe we could do, like, you know, a little menage a trois? You know what? She's actually with her boyfriend, Lucas. What about, like, a menage a dos? It's not happening, pal. So he's he's hitting hard on Olivia, and she's like, thanks, but no thanks. And then some handsome, beardy stranger with distractingly prominent eyebrows mm-hmm. steps in. Wow. <laughs> he looked like his own Muppet. Okay, sure. <laughs> this guy kind of rescues Olivia from Ronnie's leering advances, and he's like, hey, let's party. So, you know, he kind of hooks up with her. Mm-hmm. The night winds down, and they're all like, hey, we want to carry on drinking. And so he's this Sam guy's like, oh, I know a place we can go. Mm-hmm. Hard cut to... The haunted house on the hill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I really wanted to see the interstitial scene when they were like walking from this like very local club yeah. to the abandoned church on the hill in the middle of fucking nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> At no point was anyone like, you know what? This isn't cool. No, this is a long walk for no. nothing. Like, I mean, this is where the film starts leaning into. As with any horror movie, the characters in this film have never seen a horror movie. Oh no, these these are idiots. Oh yeah. yeah. So they end up in the old abandoned church, and Sam the. I'm going to just call him Eyebrows McGee, because that's what I felt his name was. So Eyebrows McGee is like, he suggests that they play Truth or Dare. So they're like, oh, that's a game for kids. We're not going to play. Okay, Mm -hmm. we'll play. Yeah. So (laughs) Let's let's play a game or something. Oh, yeah, like spin the bottle. And on that note, let's... uh... I was thinking Truth or Dare. Like this is a seventh grade sleepover or... (laughs) I know it's a kid's game, but I mean, if you play it right, it's a chance to expose your friends to deepest secrets. Make them do things they don't want to. That actually does sound kind of interesting. Uh, Great. We're in. So then they play Truth or Dare. And we get all the cliches. <laughs> we get... We, we, we do. Which I'm glad the film lent into. Sure, yeah. So we get the gay panic one where, oh no, a man has to give another man a lap dance. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. We get the streak. Yeah. Two women snogging. Which... Yeah. Girl on girl. Obviously, Ronnie was all over. Ronnie, in, Ronnie was jizzing his pants. He was like one step away from being like Austin Powers, like rubbing his fires. Yeah. Like, oh, baby. Yeah. Like, mm. <laughs> oh, yeah, because Ronnie turns up at the church. He follows them. Mm. He just, I guess he just stalks them up the hill. Because yeah. all the friends go, and then Ronnie's not part of the group, but he just turns up at the last minute. So they're playing all of these, you know, fairly standard Truth or Dare games. And it gets to Eyebrow McGee's turn. And he admits that the game of Truth or Dare that they are playing is a supernatural game of Truth or Dare. Mm-hmm. And the stakes are real. You play or you die. Mm-hmm. And he brought them up to get them involved in the game to save his own life because he's been involved in this game for some time. Mm-hmm. I think that's what he reveals. Yeah. So yeah, basically he's like... This film does get complicated. It does a little bit, yeah. But basically <laughs> it's the what he tells them at this moment is you need to do what the game demands. Mm. So if it's true for... You can't say no. You have to choose true for day. You can't not play. And whatever you choose, you have to do. Yeah. Or you die. If you say truth then you've got to be truthful or you'll die. If you say dare, you've got to complete the dare successfully or you will die. And then he just kind of slinks off. Yep. He just slinks off into the night. Yep. And they're all just like, whatever. Well, well, yeah, so at this point, he believes that he's now out of of the game. Does he? 
Uh, yeah, I think that's the case. Isn't it the more people enter the game, the longer it takes to get to your turn? As far as I could tell, that's what you realise later in the okay. film. Well, that's what they realise, but does he not know that already? I didn't think that was the case, but I'm okay. not sure. Okay, sure. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Either way, it's to his make... benefit that there's more people in the game. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. make a massive difference. Yeah. yeah, so then they all think that that's nothing, and so they just, you know, carry on. What a creep. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, they, they finish off their nights. Although main character does have a bit of a, a vision at that point and sees all of her five friends doing the face at her. Yeah, basically when you're playing the game, you see people with slightly morphed like faces as if they're doing a weird filter on Snapchat or something. Mm-hmm. And that's how you can tell they're in the game. Yes, which I must say, at times, looks brilliant. But as the film goes on, the CGI gets worse. It really, it's, it's like they ran out of money. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> <laughs> so they go back to college, think nothing of it. You know, their spring break is over. They go back to college, and over the next few days, Olivia starts to see visions of, like, truth or dare coming up everywhere. Like, it's written on her desk. Mm-hmm. It's scraped into her car. But no one can see it except for her. Yeah. And then eventually she's in the library and then the Snapchat filter thing happens and all these crazy face people are like crowding around her going, truth or dare, truth or dare, truth. And she's like, truth. And they're like, tell us, Marky, your best, the blonde girl's biggest, darkest secret. And she goes, Marky cheats on her boyfriend all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Which we've already set up that Marky is just a whore. <laughs> because when they're in Mexico, she tries to snog another guy while her boyfriend's literally sat mm-hmm. like meters away from her. Yeah. So yeah, she's got some issues. Mm-hmm. Conveniently enough, Marky and the boyfriend are right there in the library with her, mm-hmm. so they hear everything. The boyfriend like storms off, and um, so begins the game. Yeah, pretty much. Hey, Olivia. Truth or dare? What did you say? Truth or dare? 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 So at that point, basically, they start getting picked off one by one by the game of Truth or Dare. In a very Final Destination kind of way. Oh, it's this film's ripping off Final Destination, like left, right, and center. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it is. Yeah, they, they, they've got, all got to play Truth or Dare mm-hmm. in the turns that they played it back in the church. Yes. Which means that What's Her Face goes first. Yeah, Olivia goes first. Yeah. Olivia, Olivia goes first. And then, yeah, they just go around the room. I think Ronnie goes next. Yeah, they, yes, and he does. Somebody dares him just well. He's chatting up some girl in a in a club or whatever, and obviously she's not into it. Yeah, and then she gets possessed, and she dares him to show his pool cue to the whole bar. Yes, as in his penis. His yeah. penis, yes. Um, <laughs> which I think is his response. Like, oh, my penis. Or, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. And so yeah, he climbs up onto a pool table, announces to everybody he's going to show them all his penis. Yes, and then someone says, "Seen it, not impressed." Yeah. Um, well, before that though. This is such a small moment, but the biggest laugh I had in this film was when he steps onto the pool table mm. and he goes, so this girl has dared me to show my pool cue to the whole room mm. and now I'm going to do it. And some random extra just goes, go Riley! Yeah. <laughs> do you remember that? Yeah, that was odd. He was so so like enthusiastic. He's like, go Riley! He's like, he really wants to see Ronnie's pool cue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hello, friends and neighbours. This fine young lady here has asked me to play a little game of truth or dare with her, and like a real gentleman, I chose dare. Go Ronnie! Whoa! Anyway, now I will do you all the honour of showing you my business. Seen it before, not impressed. Oh! (laughs) What was that, Beth? No, but Beth said it was tiny too. And so, yeah, then before that happens, he gets heckled a bit, and then he's like, oh, okay, well, if that's the way you think, then I'm just not going to do it or something. Yeah, he, he chickens out of his dare, basically. Yeah. Yeah, then the demon takes over him and forces him to try and kill himself. And Well, first he's nearly in, 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 falls Initially, on the pool yeah, cue. he tries and falls on a, on a pool cue that stood up, and somebody pushes him away, and says, yeah. like, whoa, watch out for the pool cue. And he's like, oh, thank you. Yeah. And then walks to the side of the pool table, deliberately trips up over a pool ball, and... Breaks his neck and falls dies. over. Breaks his neck on the on the adjacent pool table. There are people filming this. Everyone's filming this. Yeah, I guess they were really looking forward to seeing that sweet Ronnie peen. Like. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, well, that's what college students are like, John. They, they do. They, they, they. Yeah, this one's very much, kids these days. They stream everything. Yeah. So the rest of the gang at this point are just sat in their dorms or their yeah. shared house, whatever. And Olivia is trying to make excuses. She's kind of saying like, "I'm so sorry, I revealed your secret, Marky, but." I think it's the game, I think it might be real, mm. and all this kind of stuff. And Mark is like, 
obviously very angry. She's like, if you touch me again, I'm going to break your hand. Yeah. Like, yeah. Which comes back later. Yeah. And then Marky storms off, not for the first time or the last time. Mm-hmm. And then they all get a text message at the exact same time mm-hmm. showing Ronnie basically dying. Again, this person who they don't care about. They don't like it at all, no. So why anybody would feel compelled to send text them the yeah. text message of just like, hey, here's this guy that you don't seem to know or care about, but he killed himself today. Yeah, that's the, that's it. So they get this video message and they're all watching They're all watching it in perfect sync. Yeah. They all got it at the exact same moment. <laughs> yeah. 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 But also, nobody texts like, oh my God, Ronnie died tonight. It's not, they're just sending the video and they're just watching mm. it like, oh, I wonder what's going to happen here. Because mm. I can understand, fine, someone's going to get his dick out. Teenagers might might film that, you know, it's, oh, this yeah, is an embarrassing Yeah, could it just been, he gets his dick out and they're like, okay, well, why are four people watching this? Like, yeah. who don't care about this person. Yeah. It's but, just odd. Yeah. So they watch the video anyway. They watch Ronnie fall off the tool table and break his neck. And they're all kind of like, oh my God. Mm. And then Tyson, this is why Tyson is the worst person in the world. He can't, He just go. this is Penelope's boyfriend. He just goes, oh, bad break. Yeah. Like, no reaction. He's just watched <laughs> one of his schoolmates die. Whether he likes it or not, he's just watched that kid mm. die. He just kind of goes, oh, bad break. And then Penelope's kind of like, oh, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> These are horrible, horrible human beings. Oh, yeah. I don't want to get into all need for speed rounds again, but these are not nice people. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's the different kinds of people. Yeah. Need sure. for speed to, to these guys. Different oh, definitely. Yeah, it's, it's a different level. But <clears throat> there was a running theme of them not caring about their own friends dying that seems to happen a lot in this film. Mm. But anyway. Yeah. So, yeah, then you find out that if someone doesn't complete the truth or dare, they commit suicide in a very bird box kind of fashion. Yes. Over the course of the film, you do get some creative deaths, I think. Do you have a f- personal I favourite? Really enjoy- yeah, I enjoyed this feature of the film, which was the, all of the different truth or dares they did. It was good, because initially the film was taking quite a while to sort of get going. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know where the film's going, could it just get there, please? And then it gets there, and then it doesn't stop for 45 minutes or something. Yeah. It just solidly it goes, just keeps going, dare, yeah. dare, well, dare, interesting truth, dare, dare, interesting truth, whatever. Just It's solidly this is exactly what I'm here to watch. And then the last half hour or whatever it is, it's all just like, plop, 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 plop. Sure, yeah. See, after Ronnie dies, and then they're like, oh, it must be real then, okay. Marky doesn't believe it. Blonde girl is unconvinced. Mm-hmm. But then she gets a text message, truth or dare. Of course it's a text message. <laughs> and she chooses dare. Mm-hmm. And it's like, do what you said you would do, break Olivia's hand. And yeah. So, so it's, she gets dared to break Olivia's hand. And she's like, I'm, not, I'm really pissed at you, but I'm not actually going to break your hand. Mm. And then Olivia's like, no, you've got to, you've got to. So then she she does it. She hammers Olivia's hand yeah. and breaks the hand. <laughs> so that happens. Then they all go to the hospital. Then we get one of the weirder ones, which is Gay Brad. Mm-hmm. He's at the... Vending machine. Vending machine, yeah. By himself. By himself, yeah. They separate so much in this film. They do. It's like, why would you not stick... Just stick... To, it's classic horror, but it's like, stick together, guys. Mm. So he gets the truth order and he chooses truth. And the monster says... The monster dared him to come out to his dad. The monster, which is this very recently deceased old man. Yeah, well, the monster just can... Um, what's the word? Possess. Possess anyone. Yeah. I think this one was the scariest of the lot. What, the concept of coming out? No, closet? no, no. That no, scares you? The dead old man. Okay, sure. Well, was he dead or was he just an old man who was walking through the... No, no, you saw that he was dead because, like, at the start of the scene, you see somebody, like, put a sheet over his face. Oh, I didn't... Cl- uh, like, okay, he's, I did like he's literally just died. Okay, I didn't pick up on that. Fine, um, sure. What was I going to say? When did you watch this film? What what time of day? What, oh, was it, was the it, night. What, I was watching was it late situation? at night, yeah, yeah. Okay, late at night. All the lights off, everything. Yeah, yeah, totally, yeah. Okay, cool. Did it scare No. Did you have to turn the lights on before going to bed? No. It made me laugh. It just made me laugh. Okay, well, well, it made me laugh too, but like... Did, did you get a little scared? Yeah, I didn't, didn't, didn't want to look in the mirror. Were you scared that you might get brought into the game? Well, I watched it until the end of the credits, and at the end of the credits... Oh, you got the true for dare. Did you think it was there? And I was like, oh, no! I'm in! Okay. Well, anyway, so Brad gets dared to come out the closet to his dad. And then this was a weird choice the film made where they just didn't show that. Yeah. So it's like you see him getting dared to do that. And it's like we've already set up that he has a very homophobic father. Mm -hmm. So we're told like, so he's very much in the closet. Also, he's 35. (laughs) Like he was the most, the ages of these kids. I guess they're all supposed to be like, what, 20, 21? Mm -hmm. Like they're all like college kids. Yeah. I mean, the actor ages really were all all over the shop, from yes, actually so. like 21, 22 to clearly in their 30s. Mm-hmm. He was the most obviously not in his 20s. <laughs> I've looked up, the actor was 34. Okay. Like, so, Great. You know, <laughs> like his dad looked more like his slightly older brother. <laughs> <laughs> so he gets this, you know, I dare you to come up to your dad thing. It's like, ooh, mm. you know, 
dramatic. Mm-hmm. And then it just cuts away. Yeah. And then he just, the next scene is he just walks in. He's like, oh, guys, it was my turn. The monster told me to come out to my dad. And they're like, did you do it? He's like, yeah, it was great. It was actually really good. Yeah. It was the best thing we've ever done. Like, yep. It's like, that. okay, that scene didn't matter. Like, <laughs> it was so bizarre. Mm-hmm. It was like, is this truth or dare monster actually like a force for good in some ways? Like, no. I was so puzzled by that lack of showing that scene in any mm. way. It was really weird. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, it's great that a man in his mid thirties can finally come to terms with himself and or more power to him, but it was like <laughs> <laughs> Just had my turn. What? The game it made me uh it made me come out to my father. What are you okay? Yeah. 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 For the first time in my life, I, I, I told him my truth and I stood up to him and I feel, I feel awesome. Okay, hold on. Your dad didn't know that you were gay? Your ringtone's Beyonce. Everyone loves Beyonce. So they're at the hospital, Olivia gets her hand fixed. Mm. Uh, but then they've separated again. Yes. But bloody idiots, they've separated again. Because yes. it's just really, I think it's just like Olivia and Brad and Lucas at the hospital and everyone else is just doing their own thing. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh shit, where's Tyson? And then T- Tyson being Penelope's boyfriend. And oh, he's, he's in. He goes to an interview. He's interviewing like for medical school. Yeah, that's it. The interviewer gets possessed and asks him truth or dare. And he says, truth. Yeah. And it's like, did you. Do you write false prescription? Do you write, yeah. do you write fake prescriptions? Yeah. Yeah, and that, that, that's what it is. And he lies because you know he's in an interview. Yeah, and he doesn't believe that there's actually a demon. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, yeah, that makes him kill himself. So he stabs himself in the face with a pen. He stabs himself in the face with like a pen, and then he headbutts the desk with that pen. Yeah. It's pretty brutal for like what is clearly like a twelve rated film. Yeah. Like because you don't really see a lot, but it implies a lot, and then you see all the blood just like pouring out of the um under the, under door. the door. Yeah, mm. and everyone screams. And it's great. Mm. I love how like how little they care about when their friends die in this film. Yeah, <laughs> they seem like they don't. They move care. on so quickly. They really get over it so fast. Yeah. So especially Penelope, like this is her boyfriend. Mm. Like she, you see her like screaming. Her boyfriend's blood is pouring out under the tape. Next thing, she's just sat at home, just swigging vodka. This was one of my favorite bits because it was the classic student way of dealing with things. It's yeah. just like, oh shit. Okay, so. You're next in this in this game where you're likely going to die. Mm-hmm. You know what's going to be a good way to avoid that? Let's just plaster you with vodka. Yeah. Like a full litre bottle of vodka and just put you to bed. Well, I think like, that... What, 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 what could go wrong? To be fair, I think that was more or less her lifestyle choice. They did make a lot of jokes about her being like day drinking Penelope. Like, oh, I mean, I'm sure. Because yeah. obviously what happens later. But like she's drinking a litre bottle of vodka mm. out of the bottle... While everybody sat around her. But that's every scene she's in. She's never seen without a bottle of vodka in her hand. She is a day drinker. Okay, cool. She is a serious day drinker. And I respect that. Sure. <laughs> okay, great. Then. It's a very respectable job. Um, yeah, and so then she gets woken up in the night because she gets the truth or dare. Mm-hmm. And she says truth, despite the fact that we all think that she's going to say dare because she's drunk or whatever. No. She says truth and then a demon's like, no. You've got to say dare. Yeah. That's, that's the way this game works or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it turns out that every... You, know, you can have two truths and then, then the third one's yeah, always got to be a dare. Yeah, they were playing two truths and a dare. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, she's got to do a dare. And they, she, she gets dared to... What was it? Like, walk around the roof of the house while drinking that vodka. Yeah. Like, until she finishes that bottle yeah. of vodka. Well, the dares seem to be very, like, poetic justice mm-hmm. Where, like, whatever dare you get, it's going to reflect your personality. So because mm-hmm. she's a bit of a lush, she's always drinking, her dare is to, as you say, walk around the perimeter of her, like, building mm-hmm. while downing a bottle of vodka. And she can't... She has to keep walking the perimeter until she's finished the bottle. Yeah, pretty much. Which, uh... You know, it was a bit tense because you think she's going to fall off. At all this was a good and... tense scene. I it liked was, it. It really yeah. was. Her friends, they actually, they organised themselves fairly well. Yeah, this is I've the most to... competent they are it all movie. It really is, yeah. by a long way. Yeah. So yeah, two of them get a mattress from them, goes up to the roof mm-hmm. um, to try and like, you know, catch her if she falls. Yeah. She finishes the bottle of vodka. And then a second later, if she falls off the roof. The guy doesn't catch her, but their backup plan of... Putting the mattress on the car, yeah. It works flawlessly. Yeah, she survives. I mean... Yeah. It's meaningless because she dies the next scene. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so then the next scene is where two plot lines come together. This is actually a film with two plot lines in it. Sure, yeah. yeah. So the film opens. Oh, we get a nice horror movie called Open now. Yeah. We open with this one person who's a bit facially scarred. Yeah. Presumably from the game. 
and she is in just like a service station sort of thing. Yeah, like a like a corner shop, like a Seven Eleven. Yeah, yeah, in Mexico. Yes, not that we see it, but she gets dared to do something. Yeah, she she, then, she sees the true far dare monster. Yeah, it dares her. She yeah. then walks up to another customer, sprays it with lighter fluid, lights her on fire. Yeah, and it's like, sorry, I've got no choice, but I've got to do this. Yes. And so that's the cold open. That's our cold open, yeah. Now, the other characters, they've been trying to track down this person. Yeah. Just because they were associated. And uh, Do you remember how they track her down? Yeah. They create a fake Facebook account. Oh, uh, you no, know, go back a bit. Uh, nope. They Google Truth or Dare Mexico. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they do. So they do track down this person. They, they Google, they Google and they find Me- the news story about how she set fire to this woman. And she's on the run, basically. Yeah. But even though she's on the run, she's conveniently enough still checking her Facebook messages. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and so they send her an anonymous Facebook message, which is a very threatening thing. It's just like, we're still outside the house of your family. If you don't come to us, then as we're dared to do, we'll kill your family or something like I that. I love how blonde Marky goes from zero to psycho so Doesn't quickly. <laughs> <laughs> One minute she's like, I don't believe any of this. This is nonsense. Mm. And next she's like, okay, what you need to do is, that message is too nice. Mm. What you really need to say is, we're stood outside your family's house and we will set your family on fire unless you visit us. Playing the game too. We need your help. Please meet me. This woman is wanted for murder. Do you really think she's going to come out of hiding for we need your help? I know the game dared you to set that woman on fire. Tell me where to meet you, or I'll wait outside your family's house until the game dares me to do the same to them. Marky, you cannot send that. If you want to live, you need to stop thinking about other people and start thinking about yourself. So yeah, that gets her attention, surprisingly enough. Yeah, she messages them back, they, they arrange a meeting point. Yeah, and they meet in an alleyway, mm-hmm. and uh, turns out she's been dared to actually kill main character. Yes, Olivia. Yeah. Olivia. Yeah, so she tries to do that with a gun. Well, she explains the storyline a bit more first. She says, well, the the curse came because her and her friends went up to the church some months ago mm. and they desecrated it, including Eyebrows McGee. Mm-hmm. And they broke a bunch of stuff and it unleashed the curse. And because they were playing Two Truths or a Dare, that's the game that has been unleashed on them, basically. Mm-hmm. And she explains the rules a little bit where, you know, there's no way out, but the only way to save yourself is to add more people to the game so that it takes a bit longer to get to your turn, which is why Agrawal's McGee recruited that group of people. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, and then she reveals that she's been dared to kill Olivia. She pulls the gun. Poor, brave, drunk Penelope just jumps in front of the bullet. For no reason. The only character who actually does anything to kind of actually help her friends. Yeah. Like, gets shot. They're all like, oh my God, no. Then because the girl from the cold open has failed to shoot the person she was dared to shoot, mm. she gets possessed and shoots herself in the head. Mm-hmm. Because if you fail to do your dare, obviously you will kill yourself. You yeah. Will, yeah. So she shoots herself in the head. Despite being held down by two people, nobody stops her from shooting No, not the really, head. no. They just kind of let it happen. Yeah. yeah. And then Penelope dies a very underwhelming death. Mm-hmm. She just kind of goes, eh. yeah. <laughs> It's a classic kind of like, I've been shot. Is the time to get me to a hospital? No, I'm just going to kind of go, eh, go limp. Yeah. And they're all just like, oh, I guess Penelope's dead. Mm-hmm. Like, they, nobody cares that Penelope no dies. No one mentions it ever It again. really doesn't matter. Like, other characters, no. they really Do mourn Do they leave for. her in the alleyway? I guess they must, because she's never spoken of again. <laughs> like, at all. Like, yeah. yeah. Olivia gets visited by the truth or dare demon, and she says, dare. Mm-hmm. And they're like, why didn't you say truth? And she's like, well, because I've got the dark secret that I don't want to reveal to Marky, mm. so I'd rather risk a dare mm-hmm. than risk being forced to reveal this terrible truth. Yeah, and I was like, why say that aloud? Yeah, sure, <laughs> yeah. It, clearly this is going to come out yeah. very soon. So anyway, so she says dare, and the dare she gets, conveniently enough, is that she has to have sex with Marky's boyfriend, who she's secretly in love with. Yeah, which, like, for a minute I was thinking, is this going to be where Marky is going to start not believing anymore. Mm. Just like, oh, this is all a ruse, just yeah. so that you could sleep with him. Yeah. I, I just loved how much it was like, okay, we've just seen four of our friends get murdered, some of which literally in front of us. Yeah. While, yeah. like, in our arm, de- dying in our arms. Literally, yeah. Very traumatic. And yet we're still on about this. Yeah. And also, Marky, like, you're cheating on him with everybody. Yeah. Why do you care? This is where I wished this. This film was funny to me, but I wished it was more like Scream, where it was more like smart and like deliberately funny, mm-hmm. rather than being like, "Oh, this is so crap, it's funny." Because 
if this had been a bit cleverer, it would have been really funny to see like two characters who actually really hated each other being forced to have sex. Yeah. Rather than like two characters who actually kind of fancied each other, which yeah. is kind of what it went with. Like, imagine it was just two characters who like, I actually hate you. And they just have to have like hate sex. It's like, oh, yeah. I hate this, I hate this, I hate this. But oh, mm-hmm. like, that could be really funny. Well, I mean, for a while, like she didn't tell him that it was a dare. No, he just kind and, of and, assu- and, assumes. Yeah, and, and she was just sort of flirting with him yeah. and he was going with it. And I was like, wait a minute, is she just not going to tell him? Yeah. And then it's going to be a whole thing of like, he slept with her but didn't know that she was dared to do it. Mm-hmm. So he is actually cheating on Marky. Sure, yeah. I was like, yeah, I'm liking this direction. <laughs> well, they kind of didn't go there. They didn't, they didn't. But they went to another weird place where she gives him a truth or dare. Oh, yeah. L- literally when she like sat on top of his cock. Yeah. <laughs> and she's just like, truth or dare. And he's like, truth. And she's like, which one do you really love? And he's like, I really love Marky. And she's yeah. like, oh, and she drops off. But I guess that's enough sex for her to not die. So, I guess, yeah. yeah. I, I don't know what the rules are there. It did, I felt like it took her a long time to... Considering, like, Ronnie died, like, seconds after deciding not to get his cock out, mm-hmm. it took her a long time to shag him. Mm. Like, she should have been like, here's my vagina, go, I've got seconds to live. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just come on, no, there's no time to mess around. Just let's, just let's get on it, let's do it, let's get it over with quick. You know, time's a wasted. Mm-hmm. Right? <laughs> yeah, because like, there was no time limit to anything, so it could have well been just, like... You know what? Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll I'll sleep with them at some point. I'll get around yeah. to it. Yeah, you know, I'll uh, they'll have a career, and you know, I'll, yeah. maybe maybe in retirement. At One some day, point. Yeah. yeah, we'll we'll get there in we'll retirement. <laughs> well, you know, sure, you know, just put it off by decades, sure, and then sure, just sure. like, yeah, all right, this is all the. It's, big... it's the honest system. Trust me, at some point we're gonna bang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying we're not going to, so you mm. can't kill me yet. But yeah, like, yeah, sure, <laughs> it'll happen anyway. So that happens. Marquis drops off. Again, then she's sat crying into her iPhone, mm-hmm. looking at a video of her dead dad. Yes, which you see a bit earlier in the film. And at that point, I was just like, oh, I really, really hope that they go there. And they did. Yeah, they did. They went they there. Did. Yeah. So her father, Marky's dad has killed himself before the film starts. So she's looking at this video of him. That is, I guess, the last video she ever has of him when he's like on a barbecue. Like, I love you, Marky, whatever. Mm-hmm. And then he obviously gets the eyes in the video and he's like, truth or dare, Marky. Mm-hmm. And then she's like, truth. And then he says something like, um, why do you still keep the gun I kill myself with? And she's like, sometimes I feel like using it too. Mm. I was like, wow, this film gets kind of dark. <laughs> like, yeah. Considering it's so silly. This film is like, it's silly teen nonsense. And then it gets to these like weird... All the characters are like super dark backstories. The tone mm. is all over the place. Mm. I do wonder though, when it's in situations like that where it's just them by themselves, mm-hmm. well, what's, what's the point? Yeah. Like, does the devil know? Yeah, because she's not telling her truth to anyone else. She's yeah. just telling it to herself. Just, just saying it aloud. Like, yeah, okay. she should be like telling her friends. Yeah, that's mm. a good point. Yeah, it didn't really have any meaning that particular yeah. truth telling moment because she was literally on her own. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, because you could just stay on your own all the time and just be like, well, no one's going to hear me, so sure. Yeah. Yeah. So that's all that happens. And at some point they find a nun who worked at the haunted church in Mexico way back in the day. She's the last survivor of the monastery, I think. Mm. So they go and find her and her daughter. She's like this reclusive Mexican shut-in nun living with her, like, granddaughter. At this point, the film really sort of started going deep into plot and lore yeah. and just weird stuff. And I was like, oh, I'm not there no, for this. Just give me more silly dares. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Understandable. Understandable. I mean, it got silly. Yeah. The, 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 this whole plot line did get silly. Well, immediately it got silly because... So they go and visit this old, old mad old lady who's mm. like, she's not spoken in like 50 years or whatever. Mm. But she doesn't speak. Mm. But even though she's like a reclusive Mexican nun who hasn't spoken to a soul in 50 years, mm-hmm. she's fluent in English. Yeah. Not only speak, well, she can't speak, but she writes perfect English. Yeah. So does this, this scene went on forever. It did. This it? very long scene where she's just writing out exposition. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so basically this is where we get all the mythology from the film. Mm-hmm. So long, very long story short, the nun has this backstory about how like, oh, we first summoned this demon called Caxus or something to get rid of a priest who was raping all the nuns, whatever. Mm-hmm. And then it backfired because the demon was a trickster and he ended up killing all the nuns as well as the priest Mm -hmm. and the only way to send the demon back to hell or to contain the demon is for the person who summoned the demon to cut off their tongue put it in a jar and then say a magic spell yeah well not that order but yeah something like that yeah say the spell cut your tongue put it in a jar oh yes i guess you'd have to say the spell first yeah (laughs) so then they do that i guess so they go back that's where they they find eyebrows mcgee again Mm because he's been arrested hasn't he oh no 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 that's what happens 
No, sorry, we've missed a bit. So they find all that shit out, and then Gay Brad, who's this disappeared. film has a lot of plot. There's more than I thought. I thought this was going to be a really quick plot summary. This film is like convoluted. Gay Brad, who's disappeared from the plot for a good hour, because mm-hmm. again he's like, they're like, oh, we should all stick together, and he's like, nah, it's all right, it's not my turn for a while. I'm going to go home. Yeah. Like what? Yeah. So Gay Brad turns up again, and he gets possessed again. And he gets dared to steal his dad's gun mm-hmm. and make his dad beg for his life. Yeah. So he does that. But in the process, his dad's police officer buddy shoots him dead. Mm-hmm. And so he just dies. Again, very underwhelming death. They have to go to the police station to explain themselves, but none of them are under arrest. Yeah, It's just like, you can come and go. And for reasons, they managed to get Ivor's McGee's address, basically. Like, it turns out that they've had him on... Is he in witness protection, or did they just know where he is? I don't know. No. Anyway, it um, doesn't matter. They go to him, and he is basically like living in a padded cell, so he can't hurt himself or anyone else if he gets dared to do anything. Mm-hmm. So, But they're like, oh, no, no, you've got to come with us to Mexico. They pull a gun on him, force him to go to Mexico. They all end up back in the church in Mexico. Mm-hmm. We get to the end of the film, where they force Eyebrows McGee to say the magic spell, then cut out his own tongue, which he agrees to do relatively easily. Well, I guess at this point, he's learned to just believe anything that sounds realistic I just more the fact that he's quite happy to cut out his tongue like, mm. I guess anything's a break the spell he's like I can't believe I'm going to do this and he just like starts cutting his tongue out it's mm-hmm. like wow okay I guess you really went there yeah uh, but he does that but then the demon possesses the boyfriend Lucas who's still alive and the boyfriend kills himself and Eyebrows McGee yeah leaving just Marky and Olivia yeah so then Olivia tricks the demon so that he is in the game as well and she plays a truth or dare moment and says truth is there any way for us to get out of this the demon says no you're doomed forever Mm -hmm. so then she decides to go on her YouTube channel Mm -hmm. and basically get the entire world involved with the game yes and that's how the film closes the film ends with her leaving a message saying I'm really sorry a demon's killed all my friends but I need to ask you truth or dare and then you see all these people around the world watching her video and getting the crazy snapchat face Mm. and then the film ends yeah, one end. My friends and I went on a trip to Mexico for spring break. We ended up in an old mission where we played a game of truth or dare. We had no idea that we had encountered an unspeakable evil that wanted to play with us. When we went home, the game kept going. He killed five of my friends. The game is real. Tell the truth. Do the dare or you die. Refuse to play. You die. It can happen anywhere and it can come from anyone. I'm so sorry, but I have to ask you. Truth or dare? What an awful film. It is dreadful, but I did have a lot of fun. I mean, yeah. maybe just because the last two weeks have been genuinely hard going. Like, <laughs> this was very entertaining for me. It could have been better. It could have been smarter and more subversive. They could have made the dares even more silly and more, like, mean-spirited. Mm-hmm. They could have had better actors in it. I thought all the acting was truly dreadful. <laughs> but what can I say? It was fun to watch. Mm-hmm. I cannot deny it was an entertaining 90 minutes of just mm-hmm. watching silly nonsense. So, I, I have very few complaints. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, that's fair. I don't really have much more to say about it either. Should so, we get some uh, drinking games? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so my first one is drink for the face. Drink every time the face shows up. That's mm-hmm. a good one, yeah. Yeah, shows mm-hmm. up a lot. Uh, my first one is drink when Penelope drinks. That's fair enough. I, I do have one that says drink when they drink. Yeah, it's so. pretty much just Penelope. I think. Yeah. yeah, okay, sure. And she dies halfway through, but she is every scene she's in, she has a that bottle of vodka mm. attached to her hand. I mean, it's a fun drinking game. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Sure. Drink whenever you see the sign for Mexico. Ooh, good one. Yeah, I like that. Mm. Uh, drink when the characters needlessly separate. When well, they should that, obviously stay together. That's the, last one, that's the last one I've got. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. So. Drink whenever they go, go off on their own. There is a point when... Oh, I've forgotten the blonde one. Uh, Marky, yeah. Yeah, when she goes off because she's annoyed that like uh, main character's got to sleep with her boyfriend. Yeah. And so she goes... And those two sleep together, and they both burn through their turn of truth or dare yes. quite quickly, mm-hmm. like pretty much at the same time. Yeah. And then no one's concerned. They're like, "Okay, well now it's now it's blonde girl's turn." Yeah. But she's out on her own. She doesn't know it's her turn. They seem no, no, to keep like, forgetting they're actually playing the game. No, no, no one even like sends her a text or something. And then hard cuts to the next morning. It's daylight. They're yeah. driving down to Mexico. 
without her. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> just like, they keep forgetting. What? <laughs> These, they're all terrible friends to each other. Yeah. It's so, like, they do, they do, it seems like playing this game is, like, an annoyance to them. Like, yeah. being, being under the spell of an eternal death curse is not like, oh my god, we need to solve it. It's like, oh, this is so annoying. It's like they have homework due or something. It's mm. like they don't take it remotely seriously. Mm-hmm. So funny. Uh, yeah, that's a very good one. Uh, drink on close-ups on one or more Apple products. Oh, yeah, sure. There are Macs and app and iPhones everywhere. <laughs> everywhere in this film. Yeah. Constant. Drink when people underreact to the death of a close friend. Oh, God, yeah. Every time someone dies, it's just like, oh, well, they're dead. Mm-hmm. Like, these characters are like sociopaths. They don't feel anything. Mm-hmm. Like, obviously, the, the, the main example is when Ronnie dies and Tyson just goes, oh, bad break. Yeah. <laughs> but even when, like, Penelope dies, like, she just kind of goes, eh, when Brad dies, they just don't care. Mm. They just do not care in the slightest. Mm-hmm. Uh, drink every time Marky storms out of a room. Mm-hmm. Double yep. drink if she says, screw you, Olivia. <laughs> <laughs> it happens so much. Yeah. My favourite one is when she does it, She like she, she's like, screw you, Olivia. She storms out the room and then literally two seconds later, the, the scene doesn't even change. She comes back in and goes, guys, come outside. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she does not commit whatsoever to her strop. It's yep. so funny. Uh, and finally, drink for dreadful exposition. Oh, God. Such as, you know, you know, since my dad died. Mm. You're the only one that really matters to me. Mm-hmm. We didn't talk about the plot point where it turns out that the terrible secret that Olivia didn't mm. want to tell Marky was that Marky's dad made a pass at Olivia mm. and she rejected him because she was like 12 or whatever mm-hmm. and told him he should kill himself and then he did. Wow. Yeah, it's predictable, isn't it? <laughs> it was pretty predictable, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then Marky once again storms out and goes, I'll never trust you again, Olivia. And then the next scene, she's like, I forgive you, Olivia, because yeah. I kind of knew. Like, <laughs> she really turns on a dime. It's so... Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. this is entertaining. Such awful people. They were Love dreadful. It. Yeah. You need... Horror films need dreadful people that you don't care about whether they live or die. I suppose, yeah. yeah. Screw you, Olivia. What is going on? Why don't you ask Olivia? It broke my heart. I didn't know what to do. Trust me, I... No, I'll never trust you again. Marky, don't! Seriously, the best friend ever. Cool, so... Oh yeah, Patreon, we always do... Oh, that thing, I, yeah. I always forget that. So we're available on patreon.com slash beyondtheboxset. Mm-hmm. And if you were to subscribe to us for as little as $2 a month, if you feel we're worth it, which I feel we are. I feel we're absolutely worth it, yeah. If you do, then you get access to all our bonus shows, which are called Beyond Beyond the Box Set, for which we review films... Um, at the moment, we're doing a bit of an Oscar season, because mm-hmm. obviously the Oscars are happening this weekend. Um, so we have reviewed every film which is nominated for Best Picture. We've nominated a few of the Best Acting and Actress nominated films as well, and there's more to come. Mm-hmm. And then when it's not Oscar season, we just do films that are in cinema, which is just good fun for us to talk about, because we normally go to cinema after recording an episode. Well, it feels like we've not done that in ages. Because of the Oscars. True, yeah. yeah. Also, if you were to come on Patreon, then... Every month, um, a patron gets to pick an episode for us, mm-hmm. and they can guess on the episode if they like. Yes. Um, I do believe that next week is that episode. It is, yes. So I'm looking forward to we'll, that. We'll talk about that more at the end of the show, but yeah. Mm. Um, and if you do want to pick a film for us to talk about which does have a sequel, then we'll do that on the bonus show. Um, you're free to guess if you want to, or not. It's up to you. Mm-hmm. And also, finally, once a month, every patron will get a 30-second advert slot on the main show. You can advertise anything you want. Um, it could be anything, such as a pair of headphones or a bottle of beer. Oh, are you back to this? It's been a while since we've had that game. Cool, yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm not going any further into that. Fair enough. Because I'm tired. That's fine, yeah. So all that's available at patreon.com slash set. Yes, it now, is. Now, some sequels. Yes. Do you Truth want to go or first? Dare. So mine is called Truth or Dare 2, So No One Told Your Life Was Going to Be This Way. Oh, God. Is this going to be the Friends game mixed with a sequel? Pretty much, yes. Okay, well, tell me more. It's not that long a story. Okay. Um, one day at the coffee shop, Gunther comes over with a weird look on his face. Okay, so this is literally just Friends. Yeah. <laughs> is this Friends set, like, when Friends ended in, like, 2004? Or? It's set vaguely just Friends. Just Friends, sure. Really yeah. Friends, Friends. Yeah, sure. um, so Gunther comes over with a weird look on his face and asks them all, truth or dare? Okay. Um, and the you know, Gunther already looks a bit like that character. He doesn't even need to do much with his face. I thought he's a good pick for it. He is. Yeah. And he's a good sort of 
external character from the main group. Yes, that's true. Yeah. He's not directly connected. He could have his own things going on, where somehow he's got involved in this weird virus. Yeah, makes sense. So yeah, they play a quick game, which gets worse and worse with all the things that they're doing. You know, everybody's making out with each other and, you know, whatever else happens in Friends. And then So Ross- who's make- who has to make out, who has to run naked... What what other what other things happen? They're the main two. Who, who has to make out and who, with whom, and who has to do a naked streak? Um, okay, well, Chandler and Joey have to do something. Lap dance, make so, out. Well, does lap dance make out naked streaks? So you've got to make. Okay, them all... so okay, of those three, Chandler has to give Joey a lap dance. Sure. No, yeah. Joey has to give Chandler a lap dance. Yeah, better. Yeah. I would say that Phoebe has to do a naked streak. I think she would enjoy that. Yeah. Yeah, I think she's the, she's the most prone to doing so. Sure. Yeah. And then. Would you go Ross and Monica making out? Oh! I mean, it's weird, but that's the point. I guess, yeah, it's true for dare, sure. Yeah, yeah, that that would be funny. Yeah. yeah, would it? Well... Funny's not the right word. Uncomfortable. But none of this would be funny. This, yeah, sure, yeah. That's truth or dare for you, though, isn't Indeed, it? Indeed, yeah. It's not supposed to be funny. Yeah, it's yeah. supposed to be uncomfortable. Okay, if you're in Sorry. a truth or dare situation, mm. and it was literally, you need to fulfill this dare or you will die... And the dare was kiss one of your siblings with tongue. Oh, no. Wait, which sibling? No. Which sibling? You've, got, you've got four to choose from. Five, four, four. Oh, no. You're going to die. No. Well, I don't care. You, come on, you know if the... I'm not playing the game, John. I don't have to. Because it's not real. I'm not going to die. How do you know? Maybe this is real. I'm willing to take the risk. All right, fine. <laughs> we all know it's Sam. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> I'm not having a conversation. <laughs> oh God. Anyway, um, so well, eventually. I love how red your face is right now. It is like beetroots. I love it. <laughs> um, so eventually, um, Ross asks Gunther, "Truth or dare?" Okay. Uh, to which Gunther replies, "Truth," because Gunther's a smart ass. Yeah. And Ross asks him. Doesn't he have anything better to do? Mm-hmm. In that kind Ross of... asks Gunther, does he not have any, anything better to do? Yeah, in that kind of aggressive way that Ross treats Gunther. Sure, yeah. Um, at which point Gunther explains the real game and the whole plot and everything that's going on. Mm-hmm. The exposition. Sure. And is, is it the same as the original film? Oh, yeah, pretty much. Okay, sure, yeah. But, you know, maybe instead of an older band's in church, it's the coffee shop. Okay, sure. I don't, I don't know. That, that is the place, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the... And instead of, like, a jar with some kind of goat's face, it's just a... A coffee mug. A giant coffee mug, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) With someone's rancid tongue stuck in it. (laughs) Yep. Great. So they all think it's ridiculous, and Mm -hmm. uh, Chandler asks for proof. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, Joey gets possessed, doing the face, Mm -hmm. of course, and uh, asks Gunther to make out with Rachel. Okay. Um, Seems like something Joey would do anyway. Exactly. That's why I picked it. Okay. Rachel isn't into it and won't let him do it. Um, which results in Gunther killing himself. Oh no, how, how so? By smashing a coffee pot against his head, unless you can think of anything more creative. No, that's good. He rams his head into the pot, into the like, espresso machine, yeah? mm. Makes sense, yeah. Turns himself into a coffee. Oh dear God. Mm. <laughs> how dreadful. So, obviously they're all a bit shocked, but, uh, you know, Phoebe, she, she's not that shocked. She assures them that this sort of thing happens all the time in New York. Of course. And, yeah. you know, just tells them to go about their days. Mm-hmm. As Phoebe would. Yes. So, this is where it gets interesting. Okay. Later that day... Ross gets his first truth or dare. Okay. He's by himself, but obviously the audience is watching. The, the live studio audience. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, the thing that's possessed for him is his pet monkey, Marcel. Oh, Marcel's still around since early season. Okay. Fine. Yeah. See how Marcel gets possessed, ask Ross truth or dare. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy that image. <laughs> um, and Does Ross... he speak in human words or, or does he just kind of like make monkey noises? Yeah, human words. Oh, human great, words. cool. Um, so Ross picks truth mm-hmm. and uh, Marcel asks Ross if he really believes that we were on a break is a reasonable excuse. Oh, okay, nice. Ross admits that no, it isn't. <gasps> Finally, some closure on that plot line. Mm, okay. Yeah, so there we go. Mm-hmm. Next up is Phoebe. So she gets her comeuppance when her painting of Gladys oh, comes yeah. to life okay. and asks her truth or dare. And so Phoebe is a big fan of the game, yeah. as we all know. Mm-hmm. And she picks Dare. Okay. She's dared to give a full massage to somebody at work, just a normal massage, while she herself is completely naked. Oh, okay. Now, this wouldn't have been such a big problem if it wasn't also the episode where Rachel gets herself a Swedish massage. Oh, so she has to massage Rachel naked. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, when it comes to Rachel's truth or dare, this one gets a bit creepy because the person who asked her Rachel truth or dare is, in fact, little baby Emma. Oh, wow. Okay. Yikes. 
don't know what that would look like. Yeah, they didn't really do that. They didn't really have children in this. It would be an interesting no. angle. They, they did do some interesting things with like graffiti and texting yeah. and an old family video, but... No babies, no. no. Mm, yeah, there's <laughs> definitely some other things they could do. So Emma dares Rachel to um, never wear a bra for the next 10 years. Okay. Is that a comment on the show? Pretty much, yes. Okay, sure, yeah. <laughs> I mean, do you remember a time when Rachel wore a bra? I mean, I didn't really think, notice, but sure. Yeah. Well, they... Well, okay, we'll ask you, but to, to, to all the straight listeners listening. Sure. <laughs> um, so, yes, from now on, if Rachel puts on a bra, she will die. Okay, okay, wow. There's the explanation for you. Okay. For you, the fans. Okay, now when it comes to Joey's one, okay, um, everybody's together. Right. So they're all just sat down, they're all watching Days of Our Lives, maybe it's a tradition they do or something, I don't know. So Joey's essentially watching himself on telly. Mm. And, uh, yeah, at one point the TV seems to pause, which is a bit odd, because it's live TV, but whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh, Joey's the only person who can see this happening. And then Dr. Drake Ramore oh. turns to face the camera. So he's asking himself. Yeah. Like the girl in the mirror. Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. And does the face, which only Joey can see, ask truth or dare. Joey picks truth. Mm-hmm. And he's asked, who in this room do you have romantic feelings for? Okay. And so Joey replies out loud, I love Phoebe, okay? Oh, Okay. Not which, Rachel. Which sparks a whole bonus season of Friends where Phoebe leaves Mike for Joey after a large drama. Oh, interesting. Okay. Is, is, is what the fans wanted, but probably didn't really need. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I've not seen the series Joey. Maybe that's what that's about. Mm. It's not. The, none of the rest are really in it. I think, I think Jennifer Anderson's in like one episode. but yeah. Okay. No. And then finally, Monica and Chandler get theirs at the same time. Okay, sure. And so they agree to go with truth. Right. As the two of them supposedly have nothing to hide from each other. Of course, yeah. And they get asked... Do you really think that Chandler is gay? Mm-hmm. To which Monica says yes at the same time as Chandler says no. Oh, okay. Interesting. And then Chandler does the face, picks up the bedside lamp, goes to whack it towards his face, and we cut to black. Ah, uh, I like it. <laughs> Dark. Yes. So Chandler was gay all along. Great. That, that, that was the takeaway from that. <clears throat> yeah. Very good. Um, I like that. Is that it? So yeah, that was truth or dare. Um, so no one told you life was going to be this way. Great. Okay. Got to do the clap each time. Okay, so I've actually done a legitimate sequel to this film this week. All right, yeah. finally, without doing something like a... Well, I've got three this week. No, or... no threes, no doubles, no... no. I've just got one idea, and I actually think it might be workable okay. as a genuine sequel, but we shall see. Okay. okay. Is it the whole thing about the government trying to live in this world, trying to help this world live, after the event of the first film? No. Okay, cool. Well, why did you think I'd go for a government angle? I don't know. This is what I was potentially going to go for at one okay. point. No, 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 no. Okay, so this sequel picks up 12 months after the events of the original film. Mm-hmm. Olivia and Marky, the survivors from the original, blonde and brunette, mm-hmm. they have gone into hiding, knowing that the entire world is now looking for them. Mm-hmm. Ever since they unleashed the curse on a global scale. So now they have to keep a low profile at all times. Because obviously... Olivia, you know, sent that YouTube video out to mm. the world and infected the world with this truth or dare virus. Mm-hmm. So she's obviously very much a public figure. Yeah. So they're traveling around trying to keep a low profile so no one knows who they are. Uh, they've basically broken the internet because, you know, desperate people are constantly trying to spread the virus in any way that they can. It's literally gone viral, you know. They're both trying to live with the guilt of what, about what they've done and the thousands of deaths that they continue to cause every day. Because, mm-hmm. you know, it continues to spread. Yeah. Anyway, so... The plan they have to kind of keep a low profile and not get caught is to jump around small kind of one-horse towns in rural USA. Every time they arrive at a new town, they adopt fake identities and work low-paid jobs for a few months just to make enough money to keep going. And then they move on to the next place before they arouse suspicion. They spent the last year just constantly moving around. Yeah. We establish all of that in a moody kind of voiceover in the intro. So I guess that's going to be Olivia's voiceover. Like, it's been a year since the events of Truth or Dare. Yeah. (laughs) She's going to explain all of that. Anyway, we pick up with them stopping off at one of those towns and they stay at a cheap local motel where Marky gets a job on reception and Olivia starts working in the kitchens. Mm -hmm. While she's working, Marky falls for the motel manager's early 20-something son who's going to be played by an actor who's far too old for the role. Drake Dunn Hall. Sure, yeah. Someone who's like 43 but who has to play like 21. Christopher Plummer. He's like 87 (laughs) but sure, yeah. Go with it, go with it, yeah. Christopher Plummer in a backwards cap. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, love I like it, it. Love it. Yeah. So Marky the blonde girl starts dating this guy. You know, she's working on reception. His dad owns the whole motel. Mm-hmm. 
So they end up having a love connection. They start dating. And then Olivia warns Mark here that they need to avoid getting too close to other people because, you know, the only ones they can really trust is each other. And they're going to have to move on sometime soon. Mm -hmm. But Marky, you know, she's got needs. You know, she's a woman. She's a blonde woman. Mm -hmm. So um, she starts to think maybe herself and Olivia can start a new life in this town where nobody seems to know who they are. You know, so apparently there's no internet in this town, apparently. So nobody recognizes them. So she's like, why can't we just stay here? You know, Mm -hmm. build a new life for ourselves. I'm sick of being on the road, you know. Yeah. So she starts dating the son. Let's call him Zach. Just you know, give him a generic American name. And she starts hanging out with his group of friends, each of whom is completely one-dimensional and only exists to add a few extra bodies to the mix in the story. Okay, so I'm thinking Clint Eastwood. Okay. Are these all going to be like elderly actors? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Okay. Um, we've got Mark Rylance. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Um, Steven Spielberg making his acting debut. Interesting. Okay, yeah, sure. Uh, who else is old? We need a woman. We need a woman. Okay. Um, Dame Judy Dench. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, so the characters they're going to be playing. So they're going to be jock friend who's always carrying a six-pack and randomly high-fiving people. Clint Eastwood. Great, yeah. Jock friend's bland girlfriend who only exists to roll her eyes and put up with the shenanigans. Booby Dench. Boob- Did you just call her Booby Dench? That's what I mean, Charlotte Collar. You call her Booby Dench? Yeah. Where did that come from? I don't remember. <laughs> I like it. I'm just great. Interested. Uh, I think it was some dress that she wore at some point that was just like, come on, you're a bit old for this. Booby Dent. Hey, she's she's a dame. She can wear whatever the hell she wants. Dame Booby Dent. Fine. Dame Booby Dent. <laughs> great. Uh, there's going to be suspicious best friend who feels like he's seen the girl somewhere before but can't quite place it, and also takes an instant dislike to Olivia. You know what, John Malkovich. Like it. Mm. Love it. I'm loving this middle-aged angle you yeah. put on this. Like, I was thinking like teenagers, but this is even better. Yeah. Anyway, so they're the, they're the three extra characters. And then the Zach himself, who I guess can be... Who else did you have in the mix? Um, Spielberg. He can be Spielberg, sure. <laughs> yeah. A few weeks pass, Marky continues to date this guy, and, you know, hang out with his friends and start to ingratiate herself into the community. Mm-hmm. And then Olivia tells her, you know, it's, it's time for them to move on to the next town. You know, they've made some money here. They've stayed too long already. Now they need to move on like they always do. Yeah. But Marky's relationship with Zach has developed and she refuses to leave. So Olivia says to Marky, she says something like, whatever happens in between you and the world, I choose you. Which was like the quote of this film. Mm-hmm. And then Marky's like, yeah, but I'm blonde. So just as their friendship appears to be reaching a crisis point, the truth or dare demon returns. Mm-hmm. Shocker, I know. So, you know, one of them gets possessed, but the demon reveals that this time the rules have changed. And this is where we're going to reveal the title of this film. Mm. They're no longer playing Truth or Dare. Now they're playing Truth or Dare 2, Double Dare. That's what I was going to do. Well, uh, it wasn't I, I, the most I, I, I had Truth or Double Dare as my title before mm. I actually put a plot to it. Mm-hmm. It's not the most creative I've ever done. But I'm, oh, I'm glad sure. you did it, because, yeah. you know, someone needed to. Yeah. So in this context, what that means is, instead of the game running like Truth, Truth, truth dare, dare, it's Dare, Dare, Truth. Yeah. It's like you're reading my mind, man. <laughs> it's good. It's yeah. good. Consequently, lots more dares. Yeah. Because <laughs> let's face it, the truths were boring. Yep. So now we get to like a rerun of the previous film with these new characters and a lot more crazy dares. Mm-hmm. So, first of all, Olivia gets dared to bring the new gang into the game. So her dare is to force the other people, you know, Marky's new boyfriend and all of his friends, mm-hmm. to go up to them and be like, truth or dare. Yeah. So now they're part of the game. That's her dare. Okay. So then they're all sucked into it then the jock who i guess that was clint eastwood Mm. his dare is to play chicken by lying down on a railway track and allowing the train to pass over him Mm -hmm. a classic game of chicken yeah classic like stupid kid game yeah so why i put clint eastwood yeah absolutely (laughs) so he's quite confident that he'll be able to survive this game because it's an old-timey railway station with like old you know old tracks and stuff and old Mm. trains there is actually a gap between the train and the the line, so he thinks, you know, as long as I lie very still, you know, suck in, mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure it'll pass over me, mm-hmm. and I'll live. So he does that. Unfortunately, it's the middle of winter, and the train is fitted with a snowplow. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> um, quick question: If you were to do the same dare, would you lie with your feet being closest to the train, or your head being closest to the train? What a question. I guess my head, because if Correct it's answer. gonna kill you, you'd want to be dead quickly. I yeah. feel like if it hits your feet first, you're gonna get horribly mangled. Mm. If it hits your head, you'll be knocked out pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. Correct answer. Okay, good. 
Moving on. Have you thought about this? Yeah, of course. Would you have the same answer? Have you not? I've never really been in a position <laughs> to actually play that game, thank God. Like, you know. Okay, cool. Yeah. Also, because nobody rides the train in America anymore, he has to wait like eight hours before he finally meets his <laughs> Christmas. So it's, okay. it's, it's both boring and horrific. Great. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that's how he dies. Uh, the jock's girlfriend then gets possessed and is dared to do a planking challenge. Mm-hmm. But she has to plank on the balcony rail of an 18th story apartment building. Okay. So this is an incredibly tense scene. It's supposed to be like the new version of Penelope walking around the re- oh, yeah. original building, you know, drinking her vodka. Yeah. However, she survives. She does it. Because, you know, they can't all just die. Yeah. Next, the suspicious best friend gets dared to force the, the entire group to play Russian roulette. Oh, that is a standard John Malkovich game. That is a game. good one. That's a good, yeah, John Malkovich is a great pick, yeah. actually. You've done well. You've chosen well. <laughs> so he has to force the gang to play Russian roulette. It's also a great Chief for Day game. Mm-hmm. So he survives, but the jock's bland girlfriend shoots herself in the head. Booby Dench. Booby Dench, she dies, yeah. Oh, damn. Thereby, <laughs> now I've just realised that I've created an image of Judy Dench planking, which I really <laughs> like. <laughs> I guess it's one boob on each side, just like hanging out. Yes. <laughs> we, we, we've made her do weirder things. <laughs> oh, is this a cons- Is this like a running theme for you and Charlotte? Well, I mean, no, as in you and me, she, maybe 70 episodes ago or something, she was a ninja at one point. She was a ninja, yeah. Yeah, she, she's yeah, done, we should, she, we should she, use Judy Dench more often. She's been some places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We should contact her agents, yeah. So. <laughs> I'm sure they'd have a lot to say. They would, yeah. Anyway, so the Russian roulette game happens... The suspicious friend survives, but the bland girlfriend who survived the planking challenge dies, thereby rendering her survival in the planking challenge utterly pointless. Mm -hmm. Much like Penelope surviving that whole rooftop thing, only to get shot the literal next scene. Yeah. So it's a tribute to that. That happens. At this point, they're all desperately trying to find a way out of this whole mess. Marky asks Olivia if they can go back to Mexico to speak to the tongueless nun. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Olivia argues that there's probably no point, but she's ultimately overruled, so they all drive down to Mexico, to the same house where that nun lived. Yeah. They go back and they ask the old lady what they can do to break the curse. The old lady writes down her answer and hands it to Olivia. And Olivia says, It says there's nothing we can do without the original perpetrator who desecrated the church, and he's dead. However, Zach, the boyfriend, says, Wait a second, let me see that. I speak Spanish. (laughs) So he grabs it off her and he reads it. And he reads it out loud, and it says, To break the curse, you must kill the one who unleashed the curse upon you. Marky and the gang are confused. Sam unleashed the curse, and he died in the first movie. So why didn't the curse end? Mm -hmm. Suddenly, Marky has a moment of realisation. And then we're going to get a flashback scene. And we're going to flashback to all of the times that Olivia was forced to do a truth or dare. Mm -hmm. And this is where it ties back to the original film. So we see she was first dared to expose Marky as a cheat in the first film. Yeah. Then she got dared to tell Marky about her dad. Yeah. Oh, and then she get, got dared to sleep with Marky's boyfriend. Oh, yeah. Then she got dared to tell Marky that her dad was a like child molester. Mm-hmm. And Marky realises that all of the dares that Olivia had didn't put her in any physical danger whatsoever. Mm-hmm. They were all just like weird truth dares. Mm-hmm. The only danger she was ever in was when Marky had to break her hand. Mm-hmm. And then we get another flashback to when they're all in the church together. And we see how Olivia actually caused the whole thing. Um, so when she was looking around the church, she found the old spell book or whatever. And she actually used it to create the game. Mm-hmm. Like So actually she was the one who unleashed the True for Day game on the rest of the gang. Ah, so not Sam. Not, not Sam not, at not all, Eyebrows. No, no not, Sa- not Eyebrows McGee. It was yeah. her the whole time. Okay. So she was never really playing. She was only faking it because... She was manipulating everyone because she just wanted Marky for herself. <laughs> okay, yeah. So it was all because she was in love with Marky, her best friend. Mm-hmm. Because Marky had already said, after this summer, life is going to tear us apart. We'll never be friends anymore. Yeah. So Olivia used this black magic to manipulate everyone so that all of the rest of the friends killed themselves so that she could just be with Marky forever. How does that explain Marky killing himself? No, Marky didn't die. What, do you not die at the end? No, Marky is the blonde girl. Who are you thinking of? Oh, I thought Marky Oh, you think the, the boyfriend? I thought Marky was the guy's name. No, the boyfriend was a red herring. The boyfriend was a red herring. It okay, was all... sorry. Sorry, run that last paragraph by me again then. So Olivia, yeah. brunette girl, yeah. is in love with Marky the blonde girl. Ah, okay, great. Yeah. 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 The best friends. Yep. Yeah. Where it's like, between you and the world, I choose you. Yeah. So she cast the spell to make sure all of the other friends died and to make sure that her and Marky were tied together forever. Because basically when I was watching the original film, I was realising, you know what? All of these spells are working out pretty damn well for Olivia. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, you have to sleep with Marky's boyfriend. How mm-hmm. convenient. Like, 
She never really got anything bad. The worst that happened to her was she got her hand broken. Yeah. And that'd be a great way to prove that you are innocent, mm-hmm. just to make Marky break her hand. But actually, you know, worst things happen. Mm-hmm. It's, it's very recoverable from, yeah. compared to what everyone else goes through, you know. So yeah. basically, this whole sequel is building to the big reveal, which is that Olivia has been the villain the whole time. Uh, yeah. True. And then I guess at the end, like so when Marky figures all of that out, they have to like pin Olivia down and try and cut her tongue out and then break the spell. And then... Yeah. Yeah. And then I guess the last few survivors get away. I didn't write the ending. Is it obvious? <laughs> no, that makes sense. Yeah. So, okay, well, like who's doing the tongue cutting? Is it Marky? I guess they have to hold. I guess Marky should be the one because mm. they're the, like best friends. The main point of this is that I want the big reveal to be like, oh, Olivia was the villain the whole time. Because I, f- I felt like watching the first, the original film, I was like, that makes sense. She's definitely the villain. Like she could definitely be the villain. Yeah, that absolutely works. Yeah. So that is uh, the plot for True Four Dare Two and Double Dare. <laughs> Very good. Well mm-hmm. done. Thank you. Okay, should we do some listen submissions? Let's. Yeah. Because I've got a few. Cool. Okay, so Dress Ramirez Medina says teens get stuck in an abandoned building and they have to find a way out using chutes and or ladders. Oh, we're going back to... The, we, we've had this already in the last couple of weeks, but sure. Yeah. I mean, it's going to happen, isn't yeah. it? I mean, um, True for Dare isn't really a board game, but fine. Like, Battleship, fair off, they're both board mm. games. Like, but... Eluit... Sorry if I'm mispronouncing. Uh, you almost certainly are. <laughs> E-L-I-U-T. E-L-I-U-T? Yeah. Uh, okay, Elute, yeah, I don't know. Eluit? Eluit, yeah, sure. You know, I'm going to go just full on English with this. Eluit Reculum. Sure, that sounds reasonable. <laughs> uh, prequel, where the demons found a way to get rid of the pass option. So, oh. so essentially it's a film set beforehand, right. where it's truth, dare, or pass, oh, I see. pretty much. Okay. And the demon's like... Who plays truth or dare with a pass option? Yeah, we- where the demons are just like, well, this is shit. Yeah. This, is, this isn't really going to work, is it? Okay. okay. Oh, I see. Okay. So they're refining the game. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah, that, that, that works. Be more of a comedy, I guess. Yeah. Um, patron supporter Mark Reed says, Truth or Dare 2, Spin the Bottle. That would work, yeah. Mm-hmm. Has there been a horror movie based on Spin the Bottle yet? I don't know, but there should be. How has it not happened yet? Should How be. has that not happened? Tate Evans says, a team at movie where this fucked up board game meets another fucked up board game, Jumanji. Sure, yeah. You know what, the two films, they're not a million not miles a million, apart. Uh, they could work, yeah. They, could, they, they definitely can coexist, yeah. Yeah, there's definitely something there. I dare you to play Jumanji. Yeah. Sure. He's just like, oh, that's a whole other thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Daniel Shalott says, uh, Two Truth, Two Darius. Two Darius? Mm. As in, like, Too Fast, Too Furious. I get it, yeah. yeah. Right. So Dom and La Familia, who are the characters of... Uh, Fast and Furious. I'll just take your word for that. Don't know which one Dom is. Let's assume Vin Diesel. Sure, yeah. They're just off the back of yet another world-saving heist when they encounter a new challenge, Mm. the Truth or Dare virus. Oh, okay. Something. Uh, Ryan Klein here says, uh, Freeze Tag, the horror film. I don't know what Freeze Tag is. I'm guessing that's also a game. Oh, is that when you, like, tag people and they have to be, like, statues? Like, is it like... Yeah, and then you've got to claw them their legs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. that, That one that everyone's got a different name for. Yes. Okay. Yeah, whatever that's called. That I've forgotten what what, what did you call it? I don't remember. No. Anyway, so uh, final one here. I've got uh, one from Dante Pano who has given me two. Mm-hmm. Um, one is a uh, quite a short one, and one is what he describes as a short one. Okay. The very short one is a sequel years later after the curse has become the apocalypse. Mm-hmm. Post-apocalyptic society where people are trying to survive and not encounter anyone who is still under the curse. They try to bury the old story, but some mischievous teens dig it up, and it wreaks havoc. Okay, yeah. I so yeah, that's a solid way to sort of get it back. You could definitely squeeze a film or two in between the two, I reckon. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Um, but his... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so he, he's preempted this by saying, okay, long version is just flat out too long for the show, so here's the short version. Great. So here we go. Okay, I'm, I'm comfortable, I'm comfortable. By the way, there are no paragraphs in this. I saw. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God there are full stops. <laughs> so we start the film with John Constantine in his flat. Do you know As Constantine? In from Keanu Reeves' character? Uh, maybe, like a supernatural sort of character. From the film Constantine? I don't know the film Constantine. I know the TV show Constantine, which is part of the DC universe. Oh, I believe film... that they're the same thing. Well, though. the film was Keanu Reeves. I've, I know the film. Okay. It's sort of like a big supernatural thing, dealing with devils and stuff. Sure, okay. Whatever. I can see the relation here. Sure, fine. So, Constantine in his flat. He's enjoying a drink and a smoke. Mm-hmm. 
Suddenly, he hears a commotion in the street. He runs out and sees a man threatening to shoot a woman. The man is shaking and seems reluctant to do so. Just as he pulls the trigger, Constantine tackles the woman, saving them both. The man seems terrified, then an inhuman smile takes over his face as he shoots himself. The woman asks Constantine questions as he kneels over, kneels over the dead man's body. He pulls out a pendant and views the man's memories to find out what happened. He then rushes into his flat and packs his bags. The woman follows him, asking him a barrage of questions, ending with, Who are you? Constantine just turns to her and says, I'm John Constantine, love, and I'm going to save the bloody world. I don't remember John Constantine being that British. No, me neither. <laughs> I'm John Constantine, love. <laughs> but I guess he is because he used the word bloody. Sure, yeah. Constantine runs out and grabs a taxi, and the city is quickly devolving into chaos as the curse spreads. The taxi takes Constantine to a nearby cemetery, but another car hits the taxi and kills the driver. Constantine crawls out and heads for the six-foot-tall headstone, which uses magic to open a door. Okay. He steps through, and we follow his transportation while watching news of the chaos the world is falling into. Cut to a small gravestone in Mexico, with the name Harry... With the name Harry on it being pushed over as Constantine climbs out of the grave beneath it. This is my grave. Oh, I'm instantly more engaged. Tell me more. Dante, this is mean. <laughs> um, he says, bloody Mexico. Can't even get a decent-sized headstone. Why would you be buried in Mexico? Mm-hmm. Maybe we'll find out. Yeah, read on. He goes through the streets of Mexico City until he finds a small bookstore with an elderly Mexican man running it that he steps into. He greets the man. Jose, you old bastard, how are you? Sorry, he spelled Jose phonetically then, it was a bit odd. How do you for H O S E A. Oh dear God. Oh, I was in hose. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, they exchange pleasantries. Then Constantine says he's looking for the playbook. Jose brings him a small book, which Constantine takes and leaves with. He travels to a ruined mansion from the first film and draws a white circle underneath him and starts chanting. Dirt around him rises until it forms a large face. Constantine says, it's Loki, and asks why he started the chaos. Loki? This is Thor's brother. Yes, I know who Loki is, yeah. Laughs and says it wasn't him. Constantine tries again with another god of mischief, and we see a montage of him trying to find the right demon, until he has an idea and summons a shadow, who he calls the Bogeyman. Mm. The Bogeyman confirms that it is his doing, and Constantine challenges him to a one-on-one game of truth or dare. If he wins... The demon lifts the curse. If he loses, the demon gets rid of this nuisance. The demon agrees, and Constantine goes first, choosing truth. The demon has him confessed that he puts on a brave face, but is always terrified. He can't rest because of the decisions he's made. Then the demon's turn. He chooses truth. Constantine asks why he did this, and the demon said, because it was fun. Constantine's turn again. He chooses dare. The demon says this was fun, but now he's bored and dares him to kill himself. Constantine does, and arrives at Death's door. Death opens the door, sees him, and refuses to let him in, saying, last time he did, he nearly destroyed the whole kingdom. This is the thing that Constantine does, apparently. Okay, sure. So he sends Constantine back, to the surprise of the bogeyman, and so now it's the demon's turn. He chooses Dare, and Constantine dares him to die. The demon laughs, saying he can't die. But according to the rules of the game, not doing the Dare results in death, and the demon disappears. Constantine sighs, and the world is saved. We end then back in his flat, enjoying another drink and smoke. The end. And then Dante says, geez, it's still real long, sorry. Has Dan- okay, <laughs> first question. Has Dante actually seen the film Truth or Dare? Uh, no, he's not. Okay, so that was just purely going off the title. Yeah. Sure, I mean, very creative. Which is creative. because he asked me a lot of detail about the film. Sure, okay. No, that was very creative. That was, that was good, yeah. Thank yeah. you, Dante. You, you are a very creative mind. Yeah, I've got to say the whole Constantine thing, that's a solid direction to take it. Cause, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Because sort of linking with demons and stuff. Yeah, yeah, that works. I also have some list of submissions. Uh, Spencer Cop said, True for Dare 2, Two for Dare, The Rise of Dr. Michael Fates. So I guess that's like a two fairy angle. Okay. I don't know who Michael Fates is. Sure. Whatever. Miles Dawn Boss said, Blumhouse, True for Dare 2, Blumhouse, Never Have I Ever. <laughs> Blumhouse, the production studio. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I never have I ever... That's a good one. Horror film will be good. Yes. Yeah. Nicky Masters said... Rock... it could always involve a flashback to how they have Heather. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Nicky Masters says, rock, paper, scissors. Yeah. Yeah. Connor Crehan said, alternative truth or dare. 
<laughs> like that. Very political. Johan Kai Cohen said, Groot or Dare? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Tree Amigos. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. Uh, Benjamin Sunday said, Double Dog Dare. Basically, Truth or Dare, but with talking dogs. Okay. Every time one of the dogs bites it, i.e. dies, another dog says, Oh, that's rough. It's just <laughs> clearly just puntastic. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, Sean Sullivan said, Spin the Devil, Seven Minutes in Hell. Yeah. Will Smith, I don't think that Will Smith, says, uh, <laughs> Two Truths and a Lie. Mm-hmm. Jonathan Graziano said, Two Truth, Two Dare. Mm-hmm. Sean Corrigan said, Would You Rather, the movie. Oh, yeah. Yep. Wow. Very good. Yeah. Tim Pegram said, I know you are, but what am I? <laughs> kind of the thing, but for dummies. Yeah. I think Would You Rather would work better as a TV show. It would, yeah. Quite episodic. I can see that, yeah. Mm. Definitely. Mike Carey said, Two Truths, a Dare, the cook, the wife, and his lover outside Ebbing, Missouri. A lot of different <laughs> references there. Hector Quintanilla said, Smelt It versus Delt It. Mm-hmm. Gabrielle Canada said, Truth to the Daring. <laughs> and Quiz and Hairs, at Quiz and Hairs, said, Truth or Double Dare, a four-episode block of that kid's show, Family Double Dare, because that's probably more entertaining than, than whatever this movie we've never heard of is. So, yeah. How have you not heard of this film? I know, it was a $95 million smash. Yeah. Who could have missed it? They have trailers everywhere. Did you see trailers for this? A lot of trailers, I was, was I in the toilet for most of them? Probably. Okay, fine. Yeah. Anyway, those are our listener submissions for this week. Mm-hmm. If you have any sequel ideas for True or Dare, or any films we've done in the past, please let us know. We are Beyond the Box Set. You can find us at beyondtheboxset.com. Our podcast is available on all good podcasting platforms, including iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, Google Play... Anywhere you find podcasts, if you can't find us, let us know, and we will make sure we are on it in the future. You can also contact us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Just search Beyond the Box Set or at Beyond the Box Set on Twitter. And we are also available on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Beyond the Box Set. And we have exclusive merchandise available on tpublic.com. Again, just search Beyond the Box Set. We are also a proud member of the Pave Media Network, so please search pavemedia.net to find out how we can help you to expand your podcasting network and grow your audience. Yes, thank you very much. I never forget. Mm. So far. I mean, it's early days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so next week uh, we've got a, uh, a Patreon episode, as we, we mentioned Patreon before. Crossover, yeah. And it is, I believe, our final episode of our season of films based off games. I'm not going to lie, I kind of hope so. Yeah. <laughs> it's not been our best season. <laughs> it's not. Like I, I thought it was going to be a lot better before we did it. I think you, I think you agree. Yeah. Um, it's... It's, it's been hit and miss. It's definitely been that. Like, I, I don't regret it, but it's definitely been... Insert battleship pun there. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a lot of... Uh, yeah, I don't know. It hasn't always hit the target, shall we say. Um, yeah, so next week we have Julio from the Contrarians podcast. Um, and uh, Julio is going to be doing Clue with us. Based two- on the classic game Cluedo. Yeah. Which I'm really looking forward to. And Yes, I'm very excited. I will admit film. is the entire reason why... Um, we picked this season. Yeah, I, I yeah. <laughs> cool, cool. All right. Well, see you, see you all next week. See you next week. Bye. Bye. Screw you, Olivia. 